Lord, we thank you and we welcome your presence in this worship experience. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. And with that simple yet powerful prayer, we're ready for worship. God bless you, everybody. We are absolutely excited about what the Lord has in store for us today. I mean, this is going to be on and popping. But before we go any further, for all of you out there who are streaming with us, uh, if this is your first time, I want you to do us a huge, huge favor. Go ahead and text the word guest to the number that you see on the screen, 404-637-2223. That will enable us to formally thank you for sharing with us today in our action-packed, powerful worship experience. We certainly pray that you enjoy and just know that you are not a spectator, but you are a participator and we are thankful to God for your presence. Now, listen, the uh, message series for the month of April is forward and that's what we're doing. We're moving forward. God is blessing us beyond belief. And so we're just moving forward, moving forward. We cannot wait until the Lord blesses us with the ability to do even more things in person. But uh, as, as we work our way to that point, we're just moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. And the way in which we move forward is in lockstep with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. So listen, we want you to stay tuned and check out the upcoming video. Uh, it is a video that's going to tell you about some of the great things that are happening here at the Friendship Community Church. And uh, you'll also see some ways in which you'll be able to participate. And so uh, we want you to check it out and we'll be right back. We have a very special guest with us. Sister Brenda Johnson is going to be with us. She is the leader of our mission ministry. And boy, oh boy, they have been up to some good stuff over this uh, past month. I mean, they have been hard at work and uh, they are just doing some great, great things for the kingdom. And we want you to uh, stick around as we get ready to share with her in just a few moments. Here is this week's news. In addition to giving electronically through the giving kiosk, the church website, or through your personal online banking system, Friendship also offers a text giving option. Simply text your text giving amount to 404-948-5006. Tithes and offerings can also be mailed or brought to the church Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. and from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Light it up blue during the month of April in support of Autism Awareness Month. Grief recovery can be a painful process. It's also a time to draw closer to God. Grief Share offers help, support, and encouragement for those that have experienced grief or loss on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. If interested, sign up on the church website or through the weekly email. Let's make the necessary steps to rebuild your life today. Friendship currently has job openings for an administrative manager and a children and youth administrator. Please contact the church office if interested. Join us for New Generation Children's and Youth Church. Children and youth, join this interactive Bible experience with music and games today, April 25th, from 10 a.m. till 11 a.m. Gift cards will be issued during the trivia review portion of the experience. Check the Friendship website or the weekly emails for the Zoom login information and schedule. Attention Class of 2021 High School Graduates. Submit your graduation invitations and a photo to the church office by Monday, May 3rd. We want to recognize and celebrate this accomplishment with you. 
Streaming worship experience times are 8 a.m., 9.30 a.m., and 11 a.m. These dynamic experiences are available on YouTube, Facebook, as well as the call-in line. Join us for prayer on Mondays at 7 a.m. Children and youth, join us for Bible study on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Check their friendship website or the weekly emails for the Zoom login information. We also look forward to sharing with you at our Revive Wednesday worship streaming experiences at 7 p.m. This is a practical and passionate study of God's Word. Check the website and weekly email for Life Group's material. The church is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday to receive donations of non-perishable items and canned goods. To those of you joining us by way of YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. Select the bell so that you will be notified when Friendship is streaming on YouTube. If you are joining us by way of Facebook, we invite you to like us, follow us, and share our posts with others to help get the good news out about Jesus Christ. For more information and for the latest updates and details, be sure to visit myfriendshipcommunity.com, join the Friendship Weekly email blast, or contact the church office. The family of our member Gregory Freeman has been touched by his death. The family of Mother Chichina Powers has been touched by the death of loved ones. And the family of Maisha Jeminson has been touched by the death of a loved one. Let us keep these families in prayer. Be sure to follow us, like us, and subscribe to stay connected to Friendship Community Church, where friendship is more than a word and Christ is the head. Welcome back. I am so excited because I am joined today by our mission ministry leader, Sister Brenda Johnson. Hey, Sister Brenda, how you doing? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you, you all have been engaged in a lot of great work over the course of this month. And uh, we just want you to spill it. We want you to tell us all about it. And, and, and we recognize that this year we uh, changed the format. Uh, Mission Month is usually in the month of August, and the Lord led us to move Mission Month to April uh, as a means by which to, you know, help people who are in need without delay. And just got to tell us, what, what has that been like for the mission ministry? Well, it's been great because I get a chance to... Uh discuss and have conversations with the different centers that we are uh, donating items to. And they are so grateful for all the work that Friendship Community Church has done for them and continue to do for them. So uh, the format hasn't changed much of the stuff we, that we do, but it has lessened maybe some of the, some of the hard work we've had to do, but <laughs> it has been giving us much more opportunities to discuss and talk with the centers and fi find out their needs. And, and that's great because we want to give them the things that they need and nothing just, you know, just what we think they need, but what they're telling us they need. So that that's huge. And, and of course, what you're referencing, Sister Brenda, is the fact that, you know, up until the pandemic, how Mission Month would work for the benefit of those who may not be familiar is, you know, we would donate used or gently used, or supposed to be gently used, <laughs> and new clothes. And the mission ministry would be, along with other ministry workers, would be tasked with the responsibility of sorting those clothes and racking up those clothes and hanging them up mm -hmm. and everything. And so what it sounds like is you've taken all of that time and energy and you have uh, utilized it uh, by reaching out to shelters um, and to places where people are in need, asking the directors of those shelters and organizations what they need so that we can benefit them in, in a very targeted way. And uh, that, that sounds like, you know, uh, the, the mission ministry members and uh, your assistant leaders 
that sounds like something that they had to be very excited about. Yes, yes, they were. That that is that is absolutely awesome. And you know, um, it, it's it's amazing how the Lord leads. But we talked about it, Sister Brenda, several several months ago. But it just felt like people were in the mood were in the mood to do something. You know, they just wanted to do something. Of course, we've been supporting our food ministry. We're going to continue to do that. Uh, but it just seemed like that people were really excited about being able to do something organized. And uh, we just thank and praise God for you and the mission ministry for giving us the organization and the structure by which to do what we have had the energy to do, and that's to help others. Right. So tell us about some of the shelters that, that you have uh, uh, worked with over the course of this month. What shelters uh, did the, the mission ministry uh, go to uh, for Mission Month and Mission Possible Saturday yesterday? Well, um, we have three um, uh, shelters that we uh, go to a, a, in the city of Atlanta, and that's Gateway, Safe House, and Nicholas House. And we have a, um, an, uh, a home facility for seniors in Forest Park, and that's Governor's Glen. And we have Wellspring that's in the city of uh, College Park, where we have the domestic and uh, abuse girls home. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. That, that's pretty far reaching because it seems like you're, you're hitting a lot of different age groups, young adults to women uh, who are victims, victims of domestic abuse to the elderly, uh, to other homeless populate populations. You guys have been busy at work. And um, as I said, we praise God for you and the work that you do and the work that you're so passionate about. And we want you to help uh, pass that passion along. And so here's my last question. Why is it that being engaged in mission work is so important? Why is it so important for, for us to be passionate about engaging in mission work? The mission work is so important because we as Christians would love and have to do what Jesus did is serve our people. And the people at Friendship, I thank you for all the things that you have done and have helped us with. You have given us so much support. All our mission ministries leaders have done a great job in helping support the mission ministry. We have so many uh, mission uh uh, uh, teams that we go out and do different things for the community to serve them and to support them and you know just to help the, the needy not the greedy <laughs> <laughs> it's a blessing to do so it is a blessing yeah. to do so and thank you so much for helping us to have a, a an organized effort at helping those who are in need god bless you God bless uh, the assistant leaders with the mission ministry. And uh, we look forward to, uh, to whatever is next. <laughs> Take care, Sister Brenda. Listen, friendship. I mean, you guys have showed up and showed out for mission month. I guess I should say you guys and gals have showed up and showed out for mission month. We're so thankful to you. And uh, we look forward to all that the Lord has in store for us. Um, we certainly, certainly, as we do every week, we want to make sure that we acknowledge and celebrate those who are uh, enjoying birthdays this week and anniversaries this week. And so if you see someone surfing around in our comment section or in the chat section uh, who is celebrating a birthday or an anniversary, make sure that you shout them out tell them happy birthday, tell them happy anniversary, make them feel real good, make them feel really, really special. And we also praise God for those of you who have been so awesome in your support of this ministry, whether it is by way of our food ministry. And uh, we certainly, certainly invite you to continue to make contributions to our food ministry. The information is on the screen. Please continue to bring those non-perishable food items, 
as well as those shelf secure food items, those canned goods, please be sure to continue to bring those items as we endeavor to help those who are in need in our community. As Sister Brenda said earlier, uh, whatever we do, it is for the needy, not for the greedy. So you don't have to be concerned or worried about where your contributions are going. But we also praise God for those of you who have been so supportive of this ministry financially. We are able to do what we do because you allow the Lord to utilize you from a financial perspective. And for that, we are thankful. We are thankful to those of you who have been so committed to continuing to worship the Lord through your giving. Uh, for that, we are grateful to God for you and you and you and all of us who know that biblical giving honors God and God honors our biblical giving. And we don't say that to beat anybody up. We don't, we don't. We say that to build you up. We wanna build you up through the power of our witness, through the power of our testimony. We are people who are engaged in this worship experience who know what a blessing it is to give. Because when we give, God just pours back into our lives. And so we're so appreciative. Again, we say thank you to everybody who participated in Mission Month 2021. It has been an absolute blast. I mean that. I mean it. It has been an absolute blast. Um, so let's go to God in prayer. And as we pray, we're going to pray over those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. We're going to pray over everyone participating in, in today's worship experience. Certainly, we're going to pray over those lives that were touched yesterday on Mission Possible Saturday. And uh, we're going to pray over our gifts and our giving. Let's bow our heads. Oh God, our provider, we're so thankful to you for all of your tremendous blessings. We thank you, God, for your goodness, your mercy, your love. We thank you for what you've done for us through Jesus Christ, our resurrected Savior and Lord. We thank you for the example of giving, the example of giving that you have established for us. And so, God, we, uh, we, we thank you for what you have done in our lives and what you're doing in our lives and for the leadership that you provide our lives, the leadership that comes by way of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Our prayer is that we will avail ourselves to the leadership of your spirit in everything that we do. Oh Lord, we lift every participant in this worship experience. Our prayer is that we all may glean from this time of worship, everything that you desire for us to glean from it. We pray, God, over those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Our prayer is that this may be their best trip around the sun yet. We lift every life that was touched yesterday and throughout the course of this month. We pray, God, for those who are in shelters in this city, for those who are in, who are in, who are in rehab facilities in this city. We pray for those uh, who are dealing with the victimization of domestic abuse. We ask, oh God, that you will touch, that you will heal, that you will deliver, that you will make ways out of what seem to be no way for those who are dealing with serious adversity. We know that you are a God of the resurrection. And just like you raised Jesus from the grave, we pray that you will continue to raise each and every one of us, no matter what it is that we're dealing with. Oh God, we ask that you bless us and keep us. We pray over our gifts. We pray over our tithes and our offerings. Our prayer is that they may be holy and acceptable in your sight, but truly God, your sight is the only sight that matters. Please hear our prayer that you will bless us, Lord, until we got to literally give even more stuff away in Jesus' name. We do ask it all. Amen and amen. Listen, for good measure, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our affirmation. Go ahead, raise those right hands. Raise those right hands. Raise them high and repeat after me. Okay, let me make sure I get my right hand in this Zoom screen. There we go. There it is. Repeat after me, in obedience to your word, we offer our gift, our gifts. By faith, we receive all that you have for us in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Now, while you got those hands outstretched, go ahead and put those hands together as we give God the praise, the glory, and the honor as our praise and worship singers usher us into worship all over the world. God bless you, and we'll see you really, really soon. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we just want to worship you, Father, right now in this place. Coming back, God. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. We worship you. Yes, we do. on the coronavirus emergency. Congress has now passed an $8 billion emergency coronavirus funding bill. Biggest employers ordering workers to stay home. The situation still is a low risk for the American public, but then again, that could change. Welcome back. Go ahead and turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 3, verses 16 through 18, as we continue our latest message series that is entitled Forward. Now, don't worry if you don't have a Bible, because when we get to those verses of Scripture, we're going to put them on whatever device you're streaming on, so you'll be able to follow along. But today, for just the next little while, I want to talk to you from this one word thought. Wanted. Wanted. In 2016, the U.S. Department of the Treasury made the historic and more than appropriate decision to begin the process of removing Andrew Jackson's face from the $20 bill, replacing him with Harriet Tubman, which would make her the only woman and the only person of color presently placed on U.S. currency. After a halt in the design of the bill by the 45 administration, it was reported earlier this year by Alan Rappaport of the New York Times that the current presidential administration had begun plans to fast track the Harriet Tubman $20 note. However, although we are still awaiting the face of Sister Harriet in circulation on the $20 bill, it will not be the first time that her picture 
has been widely circulated. In the mid-19th century, Tubman, who served as a scout as well as a spy for the Union Army, as well as the fact that she was a fierce abolitionist who most notably served as the conductor of the Underground Railroad. Harriet Tubman saw her face in wide circulation on wanted posters. Harriet Tubman, wanted, dead or alive, with listed rewards as high as $40,000 according to pbs.org. And whereas I cringe at the thought that historically this sort of treatment is not at all uncommon, especially for those whose skin has been permanently and beautifully kissed by the sun's rays, that as a country, we tend to criminalize the very people that God urgently yearns to be in connection with. But as a country, we tend to condemn many of the very people that God commands. And, and not because we are so innocent. No, no, far from that. For the Bible is absolutely true. Unless your name is Jesus, hailing from Nazareth, the Bible tells us that all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God, just stating the fact. And so now, despite our guilt, the way that God yearns to be in connection with us, the way that God desires to commend us, the way that God wants us, weirdly yet divinely, is in the way that God sees us. As persons who are so valuable that God has printed on the scrolls of eternity, wanted posters, brandishing each and every one of our lovely and handsome faces. Only the cost the cost that God willfully paid was not some exorbitant amount of money. The cost was the cross. The cost was Christ Jesus and Him crucified. That's how much God wants us. That's how wanted we are by God. In today's scripture, that which has been coined by the great Protestant reformer, Martin Luther, as the gospel in miniature has just been shared. John 3.16, you know it, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, and whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life, ageless words, timeless words that are immediately followed by a series of not as familiar, but just as important verses. Verse 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. That brings us to our first point of power. Please get this. God wants to be in a relationship with us, not reject us. That's important. God desires to be in a relationship with you, in a relationship with me. God wants to be in relationship with us, not reject us. 
Just take the text, verse 17a. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Jesus Christ's response to our sinfulness was to come into the world in order to save us out of the world. Jesus Christ's purpose for coming into the world was not for God to have further reason to reject us. Christ's primary purpose for coming into the world was to sacrificially forge a path for God to be in an eternal relationship with us. And I might add, in spite of us. In a 2015 article entitled, Why Religion Hurts So Much, excuse me, Freudian slip, entitled, Why Rejection Hurts So Much and What to Do About It, psychologist and TED.com contributor Dr. Guy Winch explains that although rejection causes emotional hurt, it also activates the same area of our brains that gets activated when we are physically harmed. Evolutionary psychologists believe that this is due to the fact that our primordial forefathers and foremothers were extraordinarily interdependent. And so the fear or the pain of rejection helped to maintain tribal alignment because to get kicked out of one's tribe, just see Cain, but to get kicked out of one's tribe was in essence a death sentence. But this is why, this is why God is so good is because here's our second point of power. Despite how people feel about us, God's disposition toward us is always love. Please, please understand. The bad news is that you may, you may never get over the fear of being rejected by people. But whereas that's the bad news, can, can I tell you the good news? The good news is, in fact, it's really great news, is that whether people like you or don't like you, whether your colleagues want to go out to lunch with you or whether they don't ever want to go out to lunch with you, it's whether your co-workers speak to you or whether they don't speak to you. It's whether your family members welcome you with open arms or whether they kick you to the curb like yesterday's trash. The one thing that you ain't ever got to do is stress and worry about God rejecting you. Because you see, unlike people who at our very best love you for who you are, God loves you in spite of who you are not. Hallelujah. Please, please, please don't get it, don't get it twisted. We are wanted. As a matter of fact, here's our third point of power. God wants us so much that God sent God's one and only son to give up his life in order to save ours. Uh, all right, all right, don't believe me? Just watch. Verse 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Okay, I see. Again, 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 I see. I see that virtually we still don't know when to shout. But just check the text. Just check the text one more again. Verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Now, 
Now, I can't, I can't speak for you, but I get happy when I see that word world because what I know is that typically in the New Testament, that word world has a negative connotation. I know that typically in the New Testament, that word world registers negatively. Typically, when you see that word world, it has a negative meaning. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Just take into consideration Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. All right, still not convinced? Okay, just go to Ephesians chapter six, verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. All right. Okay, still, still not enough evidence, all right? Tur go, go with me to 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. You see, throughout the New Testament, that word, world, it has a negative connotation. Typically, in New Testament writing, that word, world, it registers negatively. Yet, in John chapter 3, verse 17, the usage of the word world appears to be positive which ought to make us extremely happy. Even if you're one of those people that tries to pretend like butter won't melt in your mouth, it still ought to make you absolutely happy because the truth of the matter is that all of us know something about being in the world. All of us know something about living in the world. All of us, no matter how we want to put on, no matter how we want to act like we have a permanent residence in third heaven, all of us know something about getting caught up negative connotation in the world. Please, please understand, we ought to be excited, however, about the fact that Jesus came to save us from the world because the fact of the matter is that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And what that means is that despite our countless faults, despite our innumerable flaws, despite our immeasurable negatives, here's our fourth point of power. God's love for us is so powerful that it does not exclude any of us. God sent his son to save the world. It does not matter where your life is. It does not matter where your life is not. It does not matter what your life is. It does not matter what your life is not. Your life is so wanted by God that God sent Jesus into the world just to save you. God didn't send Jesus into the world to condemn the world. God God sent Jesus into the world just to save you. Just to save us. Wanted. That's what we are. Wanted. That's what, that's what you are. A and here's, here's your dessert by God, wanted by God. When it feels like people who used to be close to you no longer want you. When it feels like friends 
no longer want you. When it feels like family members no longer want you, please understand that you are wanted. You are wanted. We are wanted by God. And so please, please get this. Here's our fifth point of power. We are so wanted by God that everything necessary to experience a heavenly eternity has already been done. Check the text. Just one more time. Verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. As we, as we close out today's message, it's ultra important for us to understand that the key to getting this section of scripture comes down to our comprehension of belief. Belief. You see, the awesome thing about belief is that belief is not about us doing something. Belief is totally about us accepting something. Belief is not about us doing something, but rather belief is all about us receiving something. As a matter of fact, scratch that. Belief is all about us receiving someone. Belief is not about us doing something. It's about us. It's all about us receiving Jesus Christ as our resurrected Lord and Savior. Belief is all about us receiving what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. See, this is our last point of power. God doesn't reject us. Truth is, we reject God. Facts. So here's the solution. Love yourself. Love yourself. That's the solution. Love yourself enough to receive what God has done for you through Jesus Christ. What God has done for you through Jesus Christ, all because you are so wanted. All because we are so wanted. you're watching today, you're one of those people who because of the distance that this pandemic has caused, the separation that this pandemic has caused, 
you're one of those people who feels unwanted. And that feeling of being unwanted has not been addressed by way of a faith, a faith in Jesus Christ, a relationship with God that comes by way of faith in Jesus Christ. I want you to understand that today is your day to receive what God has already done for you. Today is your day, not tomorrow. Today is your day to receive Christ Jesus into your life. Yesterday is already gone. Tomorrow is not promised. What you have is this day. And so make this day the best day of your life. Make this day the day that you make the best decision of your life. And that is to receive Christ Jesus into your life. But you say, Torin, how do you do that? It's simple. It's not complex. It's not complicated. The way that you do it is simply by acknowledging him as Savior and Lord. And we can do that simply by repeating the prayer of salvation. As a matter of fact, if you don't have a connection to God that goes through Jesus Christ, I invite you right now to repeat the words of the prayer of salvation. Repeat those words after me. If you don't have a connection to God, through Christ, today is your day. Come on, repeat after me the words of this prayer. Oh God, you are my redeemer. I admit that I am a sinner. And so I thank you for Jesus and the cross. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that you, God, have raised him from the grave. And because of what you have done, I am saved for now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you pray that prayer with with certainty and sincerity, the words are absolutely true. You are saved for now and forever. All we want you to do is to let us know about your decision. And the way that you let us know about your decision is also simple. Simply text the word friend to the number that you see on the screen. Text the word friend to the number 404-637-2223. Text FRIEND to the number on the screen, and I will tell you that we have nothing better to do than to praise God for the great things that God is doing in your life. If, if, if you're watching and you say, Torrin, listen, I have a connection to God through Jesus Christ, but what I don't have is a connection to a ministry. I'm not connected to, to a church, and, and I, I, really, I really like what you guys are doing. I love the fact that you're committed to serving the community. I love the way that you don't just talk about it, but you do it, and I want to know how I can be a part. I want to know how I can be down. Well, the instructions are the same. Simply text the word friend to the number that you see on the screen. 404-637-2223. Text FRIEND to the number on the screen, and I will tell you as well, we have nothing better to do than to celebrate what God is doing in your life. Thank you, Jesus. For those of you who have been so awesomely supportive of this ministry throughout the course of the pandemic and even before. We praise God for each and every one of you. For those of you who are continuing to sow into our food ministry by bringing 
those canned goods and non-perishable food items and shelf-secure food items. We praise God for you. The information is on the screen. We encourage you to do so. If you have not yet been someone who has been supportive physically by bring tangibly to our food ministry, we invite you to do so. Amen. And not only that, but we praise God for each and every one of you who have been so steadfast in your commitment to support this ministry financially. We're able to continue to do what we do because of your financial support, because of you allowing the Lord to use you in such an absolutely awesome way. I am a witness to the fact that when you are committed to biblical giving, that God truly will throw open the floodgates of heaven and will pour out such a blessing that you will not have room enough to contain it all. I am a witness to it. And if you're watching today and, you, and you're not a giver, we're not here trying to beat you down. We're here trying to build you up. I know that God is not a man that he should lie, that God will do exactly what God's word says that God will do. And when you give, according to God's word, God will pour back into your life also according to God's word. Hallelujah. And so we praise God. We praise God for your commitment to continue worshiping through giving. Listen, we look forward to seeing you this, uh, this coming Wednesday for Revive Wednesday Bible Study. We praise God for the opportunity to continue to share and we remind you those of you who are parents and grandparents of children and teenagers, we remind you to remind them to log on with us for New Generation Children's and Youth Bible Study every Wednesday, 6 p.m. For more information, you can give the church a call at 404-349-6040. You can become um, uh, a, a receiver of our emails. You can become a part of our email list. And you can get all of that wonderful information. Also, for information about the Sundays in which we are engaging in New Generation Children's and Youth Church, you can call the church and get information or become a part of our email list so that you receive all of that awesome information. Hallelujah. But then on this Wednesday, 7 p.m. sharp, is Revive Wednesday Bible Study, streaming on all of our social media platforms. Revive Wednesday Bible Study, 7 p.m. sharp. You don't want to miss it. As a, fact, as a matter of fact, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend because you don't want to miss what the Lord has in store for you this coming Wednesday. Amen. Listen, again, we're so thankful to God for our mission ministry. We praise God for you. This has been an absolutely, absolutely awesome, awesome mission month. And we just thank and we praise God for everything that you do. Sister Brenda Johnson, you are a rock star. I'll say it again. Sister Brenda Johnson, you are a rock star. And so we praise God for you and your band of rock stars who have made this an absolutely rocking month. This has been tremendous. And we know that people throughout, throughout this city have been blessed and have been helped and have been encouraged by way of the great work, the great work that is emanating from our mission ministry here at Friendship. Listen, here's the blessing. May the love of God, the sweet peace of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide within us all. In Jesus' name, we do ask it all. And all of God's children say amen and amen. Peace and love. This is Torin Daly signing off of our Sunday morning worship experience streaming edition. We praise God for you. We look forward to seeing you again really, really soon. We'll see you this Wednesday, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Keep moving forward. Hallelujah.